Next on KGW News, it's just April and we're already seeing a historically high level of wildfires. No comparison over the last 30 years. Plus, the arrest and charges to come out of last night's riot and insight into the group that continues to protest. Those that remain are more committed and are more um, radical. Then, mixed reaction from parents as schools look to bring kids back into classrooms five days a week. He's definitely been been ready <laughs> since day one to go back. It seems a little premature and maybe even inappropriate. And later, the warning from local researchers about one popular air purifier. We begin tonight with a big step in the vaccine rollout in Washington. Starting tomorrow, everyone 16 and older will be eligible to get the shot. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter. It's good to have you with us tonight. Health officials say they're ready for increased demand, but as Catherine Cook reports, they need your patience. Right now, roughly 5 million Washington residents are eligible to be vaccinated. When all adults become eligible on Thursday, that'll add another one and a half million people to the list. Health officials say it will take several weeks to get everyone signed up and vaccinated. They've expanded clinics, but it's the dose supply from the federal government that's holding them back. The state is doing about 57,000 vaccinations every day now. Locally, the Clark County Fairgrounds site administers about 2,000 doses a day. They've expanded their operations to go until 8 p.m. a couple nights a week. The Vancouver Tower Mall Clinic is planning to deliver 4,000 doses this week. It's open starting Friday. In the meantime, health officials are concerned about an increase in coronavirus cases and hospitalizations. We are seeing increased cases. There is big concern that's a fourth wave. Um, people need to distance themselves. They need to wear a mask. I know the weather is turning nice. I know people are tired of doing this. The sharpest increase in COVID cases are among people in their teens, on up through those in their 40s and 50s. That's the group most likely to go to bars and restaurants or travel. And right now, most of them are still unvaccinated. Catherine Cook, KGW News. Now, here are three more things to know about the vaccine rollout tonight. One, a CDC advisory committee said it needs more data on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine before it can make recommendations on its continued use. The CDC recommended providers pause use of the vaccine yesterday because of rare reports of blood clots. Just six people have reported the clots out of seven million doses. Number two, while some clinics have had to cancel because of the pause, Oregon's governor said today this will not impact the state's eligibility timeline. Everyone 16 and older in Oregon will still be eligible for the shot starting Monday. And number three, Pfizer announced it will increase production of its vaccine by 10 percent with the plan of delivering 220 million doses to the federal government by the end of May. Here's a look at where we stand with administering the vaccine. In Oregon, 970,000 people are now fully vaccinated. That's 23 percent of the population. Another half million have their first dose. Washington has fully vaccinated 24.9% of people in the state. Another 1 million people have their first dose. School leaders navigating this new normal are looking at bringing students back into classrooms full time. In some districts, it won't be until next school year. But as our Mike Benner found out, others are ready to do it later this month. In the small southwest Washington town of La Center, most students are engaged in hybrid learning. That means the kids are in the classroom for only a couple of days a week. It weighs heavy on Libby Cameron's 16-year-old high schooler. This has been really hard to not be in school full-time for him. For Cameron's son, at least, things are about to get a lot better. At a school board meeting Tuesday, the La Center superintendent recommended a return to in-person learning five days a week starting on April 26th. The school board approved the recommendation, and Cameron is thrilled for her son. I'm happy for him to, to be able to do something that he really wants to do. He wants to be with teachers and friends, and I think that's a good thing. It surprised me, I guess. It seems a little premature and maybe even inappropriate. Adam Mossbrucker has an elementary and middle schooler in the La Center School District. Mossbrucker has reservations about a return to school full time. We're a couple months from the end of the school year, and to cause another transition, to create another disruption, 
Um, it just it seems unnecessary. Mossbrucker wishes the district would adopt the plan Portland Public Schools is zeroing in on, waiting until fall. On Tuesday evening, PPS Superintendent Guadalupe Guerrero said this about next school year. It's our expectation that we will fully reopen for five days a week of in-person instruction this coming fall. Back in the center, barring a jump in COVID cases that could derail the plan, students will be back in the classroom five days a week before the end of the month. I'm interested myself and for my for my kids to be able to um, get back to some form of normal. All right, this news out of the center impacts second through 12th graders. That's because kindergartners and first graders are already back in the classroom full time. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. It was another high fire danger day around the area. Cowlitz County fire crews had to scramble to keep this fire from spreading to nearby structures. It started in the field east of Kelso and quickly caught some power poles on fire. In Multnomah County on Northwest Skyline Boulevard, this was the burned out area left behind after a motor home and six cars caught fire. Firefighters had to keep the flames from spreading into the woods. There are burn bans now in place in both Multnomah and Clackamas counties through this weekend. That means no recreational campfires, no fire pits or burning yard debris. We've been seeing small fires take off over the past few days because of the wind and very dry conditions. As we told you here last night, fire crews say they're seeing burn bans go into effect earlier and earlier each year. Today, Joe Ranieri got some historical perspective on our fire seasons and what this early activity could mean for the rest of the year. 2021 is already proving to be a year like we have never seen before when it comes to wildfires. 2021, uh, maybe now four times the number of fires for the average at 85 fires right now for the year. Tom Fields is the fire prevention coordinator for the Oregon Department of Forestry. He says that number is the highest he has seen in more than 30 years. The closest that we can get is 2004 and 2005. Uh, we saw between 55 and 60 fires for this time of year. And the good news for those years was it turned out to be uh, very moderate in terms of the, the fire seasons. Fields doesn't remember a time when there have been so many burn bans across the state and especially in the metro area this early in the year. We're seeing this everywhere. Uh, usually this time of year we see most of our problems down in southern Oregon, but uh, no one is immune to this situation right now. The Oregon Department of Forestry says wildfires aren't just the ones you see burn out of control in the middle of forest. Even a backyard burn that gets out of control is considered a wildfire. Uh, for the most part, people should be able to do this safely. But, uh, you know, over the last several years, people are getting surprised by the fact that it's so dry. This month, we've seen under a tenth of an inch of rain. In a normal April, we should be over an inch and a quarter of rain already. ODF doesn't start looking to see if fire season is going to be bad or not for another couple of weeks. We generally follow significant fire potential on the National Fire Danger Rating System beginning May 1st, and maybe we need to change things a little bit now. Look at that a little bit earlier. Fields advice? To make sure we get through this dry stretch, hold off on any burning, and if you've already started burning in your yard... Piles, they get compact and they can hold heat for several weeks, even months at times, go back and check those for heat and smoke and make sure that they're, they're completely out. Make sure to continue to check in on it well after the flames have burned out. Tonight we learned it was an informant who helped Portland police arrest one of the people accused in a fire at the police union office last night. This happened as a planned protest was declared a riot in North Portland. Alma Raven Guido was arrested and the Multnomah County DA announced he was charging her with three separate counts. According to court documents, an informant told police they saw Raven Guido spraying accelerant on a fire that had been started against the building. Police say she had lighters and bottles with what appeared to be an accelerant in her bag when they arrested her. We learned she was arrested once before after a riot at City Hall. The district attorney did not pursue charges then, but has now charged her with another count of felony riot related to what happened previously. Tonight on the story at six o'clock, Dan and the team took a closer look at who's a part of the crowd that continues to protest in Portland and what they're fighting for. 
I talked earlier today with someone I've wanted to talk to on the show for some time. He's a journalist with OPB named Sergio Almost. You may recognize him best by his Twitter profile. His coverage of the Portland unrest and riots over the past year and a half has been, in my opinion, unmatched, and it's helped grow his Twitter following to more than 100,000 people. I wanted to ask Sergio about a question that keeps coming up. Who are these people out there night after night? The ones still fighting with officers and getting tear gassed by ICE and creating chaos in neighborhoods still. And what do they want to make it stop? With this specific group that we've seen the last two nights, um, uh, this group is calling for the abolition of police. So they're not interested in reforms or um, partial defunding. This group, which is a smaller group, right? On Monday, we saw 200 people. Last night, we saw about 75 people. Um, one reason why maybe uh, the general public has a harder time understanding um, their, their point of view is at this point, that group isn't so much interested in kind of convincing um, the general public, right? So they, m many of those protesters will not give statements to the press. They won't identify themselves at all. They won't hold press conferences or things like that. They're not so much interested in convincing other people. They are interested in what, you know, direct action. They're interested in immediately changing things. So we know society isn't going to abolish police or abolish prisons. So it seems to me that these people probably aren't going to stop. I also asked Sergio what he expects to see with the protests as summer kicks in and his thoughts on how the police response to these demonstrations could be encouraging protesters to continue. You can hear more of our interview right now on the KGW YouTube channel.